Hello everyone, welcome back to our YouTube Telco page. Today we are going to discuss about S1AP protocol. As you know, the S1AP protocol will be used for the LTE networks. So in LTE network, we have the two planes. First one is the control plane that goes towards the MME. And the second one is the uh, user plane that goes towards the serving gateway and then forward it to the PDN gateway and to the internet. So <clears throat> regarding the S1 AP, it will be used between the E node B to MME for the control plane and the interface will be the S1 MME. Here, the S1 MME will come into the picture for the S1 AP protocol and for the S1 U, we can have the user plane traffics running beyond uh, the UE from the serving gateway E node B to UE. So this is the uh, basic diagram regarding the uh, control plane and user plane divide uh, for the LT network. So let's have a look about the S1 AP protocol, how S1 AP looks like and how it is defined. So S1 AP protocol is defined as a 3GPP specification 36.413. In a S1 AP protocol, we will have the elementary procedures. That procedures is actually the unit between the interaction to E node B to the EPC. As I said, the EPC will be like control plane and the user plane. In elementary procedures, we have divided in two parts. First one is a class one and second one is as a class two. So for the class one, there is the difference is the class one will have the response and for the class two, it will be without response. We will see the message types for the class one and class two in the end of the presentation. Specification notation how the S1 AP protocol look like. So there will be the procedure which which will refer the procedure name and it will be written the first letter will be written into the upper case with the procedure code. How the procedure will be there? We will see in the messages. Uh, messages when referring to a messages, it will be referred as a message name and all the message name will be written into the uppercase letters. IE, I is the information elements that refers the information resides with the masses, what the masses value will have the information about that, that will be consist into the information element. Now we will discuss about the services how the services will be provided for the S1 AP protocol. So there will be the two groups of the services that will be divided for the S1 AP protocol. First one is a UE associated and non UE associated. So regarding the non UE associated, it will be mostly used for the signaling connection between the E node B and MME. So that will be used for the non UE associated signaling connection. U associated service says are like it's related to one UE. So it's related to the services associated with the signaling connection that maintain for the UE. So there are keep in mind there will be the two services for the S1 AP, non-UE associated services and UE associated services. Further going ahead, we will have the functions for the S1 AP masses and S1 AP protocols. So what S1 AP protocol will do, what the functionality of the S1 AP protocol is. The first one is ERAB management function. So ERAB is radio access pairs. It will be setting up the radio access pairs, modifying it and releasing it, which will be actually, it will be triggered by the MME and the release can be triggered by the E node B as well. 
the same initial context transfer function that will be used to set up the default IP connectivity to set up one or more e wraps requested by the MME and the transfer of NAS signaling. Next one is the UE capability info indication function that will be used into the NAS PDU messages when UE will send the capability to the network what are the UE capability is like that UE is uh, able to handle the voltage calls and able to handle the 5G so that a kind of uh, condition will be sent by the UE to the networks like uh, mobility functions like uh, the MME to MME handover like serving gateway handovers that can be uh, uh, followed by the s one ep protocol as well and the intra rate handovers and interact 3gpp handovers as well the paging functions will be also used for the uh, uh, s one ep protocol that is uh, uh, provide the functionality for the epc with the capability to the ue nas signaling non access startum like security signaling between ue and mme ue context notification function status transfer location reporting and many more so these kind of functions this kind of work that s1 ap protocol will do so if you can see the mostly the work is related in the initiation so s1 ap protocol will come into the picture in a very initial phases once the radio access part will be communicated to the networks so the another story about the snap protocol is like once your ue and the radio wants to communicate with the uh, core network it will fall under the snap protocol so as i said i'll show you the class one procedures the class one procedure types are like the request and response so maybe the response can be positive or negative but definitely they should have the response so uh, if you can see here is for the handover preparation the elementary procedure the masses will be handover required and the successful outcome if it is a successful it will be coming as a handover command if it is a failed then you will get a handover preparation failure mean to say that if that procedure falls under the class one you will get a response either successful or, or either unsuccessful but you will get a response but for the class two procedures you won't get any response like we can see in a LT attach message so if you can see initial UE message there will be the no response for the initial UE message because it falls under the class two procedures so class two procedures won't have any response they will only have the request so like that the handover notification trace is start deactivate trace these kind of uh, procedures won't have any response let's have a quick look into the wiresack traces how the wiresack traces will look like and how the protocol will be look like for the uh, s1 ap so as you can see i am just opening one message initial ue message and that will fall under the class 2 procedures so they don't have the, any response so initial ue message will go once subscriber is getting is trying to attach with the lt network so if you see the protocol stack for the s1 ap protocol will be frame 1 that is l1 l2 ip sctp and s1 ap so that is the protocol stack for the uh, s1 ap protocol so s1 ap is an application layer protocol and the transport we will use is for the sctp the stream control transmission protocol so as we said in a in a in a presentation so we will have the message type so s1 ap protocol if i will open that one it will be coming as a s1 ap pdu protocol data unit initiating masses initial masses it's an initial masses 
the procedure code each message in the s1 ap will have the procedure code so it will come in like initial ue message procedure code is 12 now the value the value will be like five values five items you know five items will be protocol unit and as as we know uh, for the lt attach there will be the five information elements into the uh, initial ue masses so first one will be the id of the e node b and ue that is e node b ue s1 ap id second one is nas pdu nas non-access startum protocol data unit tai tracking area identity ecgi and rrc establishment cause so in that nas pdu we will get the uh, uh, information about the subscriber about the mobility identity and all this stuff so you can see here the timzy the um, temporary subscriber identity timzy if it is a fresh attach it will come as a timzy but it is a like looks like uh, it's a repetitive uh, attach so mme will create the temporary id to secure the mz and that can't can't be hacked so you can see here the ue network capability that is what we have seen the ue network capability information will be sent uh, in a s1 ap protocol you can see here the tracking area identity so it it will say the tracking area code what is the tracking area code of that the plmn identity the mcc and mcc mnc the mobile RRC establishment cause, RRC establishment cause will be the MO signaling. So that is a basic about the uh, S1 AP, how S1 AP will look like. So first thing about S1 AP will be how S1 AP will look like is a procedure code will be there. The information will come into the values and value will be saying about how many information elements will be there. So in that we have the five information elements. So it will be like uh, the five information elements will be visible and all should have their unique values. If we want to filter this S1 AP messages, we can filter it with the uh, procedure codes as well. So first you have to know the procedure codes, then you can filter with the procedure codes as well. So what will, each procedure will have the value. So if you have the if you know the procedure code that is mentioned in the 3GPP documents, so if you can just go through it and find the procedure code, you can filter easily which masses you want to see in a wire circ. Uh, I, I hope that session will give you the basic understanding about the S1 AP protocol and in future we will come to the uh, depth into the S1 AP protocol how S1 AP protocol will be used for the inter MME handover and for the serving gateway handovers, what are the messages will be triggered, how the path request change will be happen. That can be, we can see into the latter phases. Hope this video will give you the basic insight. Thanks for watching that. And if you like that video, please uh, hit the like button. Thank you.